Hello there, YouTube. So today we're going to install a battery disconnect on a 12 volt battery for a camper for travel trailer. See the battery there in the battery box here. So for those of you who don't know or are just now starting to look into this, um, there's quite a bit of electronics in newer campers and RVs these days. Um, and a lot of it runs off of 12 volt. Um, so what you can run into when, when you're home then um, is you're always having to get in and disconnect your battery. Otherwise it's gonna drain, um, just phantom vampire drain um, will drain that battery down. Um, in this particular camper, there's quite a few USB ports um, you know, on the wall outlets. And I noticed after we brought it home that quite a few of those had, well, all of them had uh, little LED lights in them to show when they had power. Uh, stuff like that just draws power down. And, you know, in our case, we're, we're not camping every weekend. So when the camper's sitting um, with the battery hooked up and those things just sitting on constantly, uh, it's going to create enough draw to eventually start killing batteries. And uh, batteries are not cheap but these little guys are so what i'm going to do i've watched several videos out there and uh, a lot of them were okay but none of them were uh, quite as good as i would have hoped but um, i'm going to hook this into um, a separate cable that i have i purchased a uh, 24 inch negative cable we'll hook this into one of the uh, one of the bolts in here and then the negative that's coming from the camper will hook into the other side and then it's just a simple switch um, i'm going to mount this box uh, right here on the side i've seen several people uh, mount them on the top on the top um, which would be fine but you know if i'm ever getting in and out of this then i'm always going to have to be um, fiddling with I'm always going to be fiddling with uh, the wires coming off and, and everything and, it, and I just I want to be able to just take the strap off this remove this cap and be done with it and not have to really deal with it too much so I think mounting it here on the side will be a pretty good bet I'm gonna to have to seal it regardless uh, this particular one did not come with any type of any type of gasket like weather seal so um, I have some uh, some sealant like roofing sealant I'm gonna put around um, the exposed um, areas just to keep water out um, it shouldn't water should never really be much of a problem but um, just to make sure that there's that there's no real issues so right now I'm going to drill some holes in the side here and get this bracket mounted uh, this whole process should not take very long um, there's quite a few of these you can find online on Amazon this particular one was like 16 bucks I think um, I mean, they're pretty inexpensive for the amount of time it'll save me just not having to open that up every time and remove the, uh, the negative terminal or the negative cable. Uh, just kind of a time save little thing, not, uh, and, and it's not very hard to do. So uh, I'm going to get started and I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so I have the, the bottom of the box mounted on here. Uh, drilled the pilot holes through there, so they're ready to go. Uh, next up, you have to decide how you're going to wire this. Um, in this case, this particular one has four different sides you can remove. Each of these little panels are removable, so you can run your cables in from whichever direction you want. Um, I'm opting to run them both out of the same side, so I really only have to have one side exposed. And I'm debating um, cutting slots into this, just cutting little slots out, just enough for those cables to sit in, so the whole the whole thing isn't open and exposed. Um, that's still a debate that's going on in my head. I'm, I'm contemplating that, but uh, it is one thing you, you'll need to consider uh, when you're mounting this: um, which which direction you want the switch to be. Uh, in this case, I'm going to probably have this one mounted um, like this on the box. 
and then it'll just switch to the back for on, obviously, and then down for disconnect. Um, it's just something that you're going to have to consider for your individual application, but uh, that's the way I'm going to go with it. Um, I'm also going to go get a little bit of um, electric grease and put in those connections just so they're help them with corrosion resistance a little bit just since they are going to have, have a little more exposure to um, the elements um, just to just to make sure but uh, that's kind of where we're at something for you to consider as you uh, as you do this project yourself but um, let me go grab the grease and we'll get going with this okay got the disconnect on the box uh, if this you get you do end up getting this particular one I'm going to link it in the description uh, make a note that you will need um, an allen wrench to tighten these up um, I didn't I mean I've got all the tools so it wasn't a big deal but I didn't realize that at first I didn't pay much attention um, right now I'm in the process of I'm gonna get these little nuts tightened up and we should be good to go uh, once I dis once I connect the um, the other cable to the battery. Uh, one thing to note, depending on the size of your battery box, if you do opt to mount one like I have, make sure you have enough room in the battery box for the battery to be in there with these um, with these bolts sticking through. In my case, there's plenty of room, so it's not a big deal. But um, if your application is a little different, just be aware that. Um, you need some some extra clearance for those bolts to stick through. Um, it would probably be more of an issue if you're mounting on top of the box, I would guess, depending on where you mounted it, just to make sure your bolts don't get into your terminals on the battery. So uh, another reason I'm, I didn't really think about that before I started, but um, I am glad I mounted it here on the side, so that's not really an issue. But all right, I'm gonna get these tightened up. And I don't have a good place to set the camera doing this job, so uh, I'm not going to do it live. I'll just be back once I get done and once I have the battery hooked up. All right. Everything is installed. Terminal's reconnected. And we are done. Going to test it and uh, just verify everything is okay and that it's actually doing its job, but I'm... I have no doubt that it is. Uh, put a little bit of um, terminal grease on that just to make sure that that connection was going to be okay. Got it positioned back where it was, and I believe this job is done. This is a new camper for us, so I've got quite a few things on a, a checklist to, to do, and this was just one of the many. Um, next, we'll be getting the vent covers on the uh, the. The crank vents on the roof um, I'll make an upcoming video about that those are pretty easy to install but if you've never done it before and you have a question um, it kind of helps to see a video so at least you know what you're getting into but this job is done so I hope it was helpful give it a thumbs up if uh, if you liked it and uh, if you want if you can subscribe gonna be more videos um, little how-to videos and various little projects I do so uh, hopefully you found this helpful and have a great day